Welcome to my demo. My name is Ashley. I am the owner and creator of Angelic Studios. I have been operating in Calgary for about 10 years now. Um, I work independently and I also am a member of IOTC 212, so I work with the film union here in Calgary. Um, today we're going to be showing you zombie makeup because it is popular and people love it and it's going to look gross and awesome. Um, so I'm going to have Kyra here um, working and Rima, both of which do work independently as artists in Calgary as well. They just like to come and help me out once in a while, just as a group, one big happy family. Um, both work in film, TV, commercial. Um, Kyra is also a teacher here, so if you have any questions about like where to go to school, she won't be the girl. <laughs> um, so I'm basically just gonna kind of do a run through of what they're doing. At any point in time, if you have a question, put your hand up. I love questions, I love answering things, because I want to make sure that I touch base on anything that you guys want today. Um, that being said, before we brought him up here, we applied third degree. Does anybody know what third degree is? No? Hmm? It's a gel? Sort of. Third degree is a two-part silicone base. You can buy it at um, a lot of local shops here in town. It is, uh, like, have you ever used putty? Like, put one to the other and then it solidifies? Same idea, but it's silicone based. Um, so you do equal parts A, equal parts B, mix it around, and then you move it around the face. The longer um, it sits there, it starts to thicken and thicken, and then it's just a rubber feeling on the face. And when you're done, the best part about it is you just peel it off. So there's no adhesive, um, nothing to be, unless you're you know, allergic to silicone, but no other things that you'd need to be worried about with it. It's a fantastic product, and it comes in light, medium, dark, and blood red. So it's great for burns, it's great for tons of different types of looks, um, and Where we love would we be it? able to find any? Where? Where would we be able to find any if so, we wanted to do this for Halloween? Dawn's Hobby Shop will have it. Um, the costume shop? Uh, Bleeding Art. Bleeding Art. Bleeding Art Industries has it as well. Um, you also can buy it online from, um, does Backstage have it? Uh, Backstage Cosmetics has it, which is yep. Calgary local. And then um, I feel like you can, oh, well, I know you can off Bleeding Art. Yeah. Online. Yeah. So there is a few different shops, and if you have any more questions about the products, um, grab my card when, from my booth, and then I can let you know over email. I'm really good with answering stuff like that. So they just started, like I said, with the third degree silicone. They are just placing it in areas on the face where they kind of want to make it look a little more raw, um, where the skin is falling apart, where they've been shot. Bullets are good. Um, cut lacerations works really well with this stuff as well. Um, I have a question. Yes. There's a guy walking around here who's just obviously somebody who's come in. He's not a yep. guest. And he's got a slit throat. Mm -hmm. And he's got these edges that stick out. And it looks like he took some plastic or something, painted it red, mm -hmm. glued it on, and then put makeup around it. Yep. did an excellent job. But I'm wondering, instead of having to glue plastic to yourself, can you do that stuff where you have bits stick out? And you can, yeah. So like I said, when you start out with the product, it is a bit thinner. You have about a five minute working time with it. The great thing is about three to four minutes, it starts to thicken. So you can really pull it up off the skin. And you just kind of keep working with it until it stops dropping and it sits and solidifies. Oh. So it is worth it, yeah. He probably had bought a full prosthetic and then applied it with adhesives oh. and colored it from there. Um, yeah. So as they're going, um, you're going to be with zombies, especially because they have no color in their skin left. One thing to be aware of with zombies is you never want to use white. The skin doesn't really go white. Yes, we would like to say that, like, I have really white skin, but it's not actually white. There's pink tones, red tones, yellow tones in everybody's skin type. So when you're looking for a pale color to put on your skin, take a look at your skin, go to about three, like two to three bits lighter than your actual skin tone. And that would be kind of like that drawn out, blood out of your skin look. Um, applying it, the best way to do that, because you don't want to leave lines, right? People don't have lines on their face. It's all pixelated. Um, you would probably best be using a sponge that you pull off, you know, the ends too. So make it a little rigid and dab it on the face so it kind of gives you that blotched out look. Um, you can also do this with, well, you can do it with creams. Um, you can also do it with alcohol-based products. And by using the alcohol-based products, you would use a toothbrush or some type of hard, um, coarse brush where you would activate it with alcohol and actually just flick it. 
so it leaves all these little dots on the skin. Um, it gives a great overall look. You just don't want to use too much because you don't want to put too much alcohol on the skin. But those are the two different ways that you can do it. Any questions? The uh, palette thing that she's holding, mm -hmm. what is that? This one is one of the alcohol based. Yeah. Do you guys have? So you can get all of these again, yeah. All of these again you can get at um, all those local suppliers that I already mentioned. Um, they are activated. They have their own activators or you can activate them with 99%. 70 won't work, so don't try that. Um, they come in a wide range of colors. That's and what she's doing, the spraying the alcohol she's, on? Yeah, so if you watch with the toothbrush, she's just going to flick it onto the skin. Flick it is not a professional term, it is just what we call it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It's just a toothbrush. Yeah, you want to get. You don't want to use a soft one. You want to get it like a like as hard as possible. I don't really think they sell much of the hard toothbrushes anymore, but a medium could work if you. And honestly, dollar store, like, because they're going to be coarser and. Yeah, fingernail brushes work too. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, you can get these in a wide range of colors. They also come in mini packs, um, and I'm pretty sure there's some out there that are actually specifically towards looks that you want, like zombies. So you're spraying rolls with alcohol as you go and then applying it, and then does it just dry out until you spray it again? Yes, so it'll dry and it won't move unless it is activated with the alcohol again. And how long will that makeup typically last? Uh, if you set it properly, um, it will last you a good few hours. Um, it is what we use in movies, right? So we want to be able to use a product that is going to last you throughout the day so you're not constantly trying to reapply because then the look will change, right? Because yeah. you're not always going to be able to spread those dots the same way you were the first time. Question. Oh, yes? Hi. Hi. I've seen gags where um, like they peel the skin back. Yep. Like say I'm scalping somebody. Mm -hmm. And there's like brain matter and, and wetness. Mm -hmm. How is that done? More than likely, they have put a bald cap on that person. On the bald cap, they would have applied some type of brain-looking appliance um, and then covered it up with another appliance that goes over that so that when you peel it back, it reveals itself. Most of the time, that's not just a prosthetic that was built. It's kind of like layers, and they normally do put a bald cap on as well. Oh, you're seeing where, where they're doing it and the blood starts to trickle. Yeah, so it's, it's just pockets. Yeah, they'll like they'll pre-prep it inside so that when you peel it back, it back it'll drip down. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, there's lots of different ways. It just depends on the prosthetic artist as well, right? So there's lots of different ways that you could possibly do that. They could be running lines in it as well. We've done that a lot with neck slits and stuff where you just have these like basically like pump lines, right. so that when it peels it back, someone is standing there off in the distance, you can't see them. They're down on the ground, and then they'll pump it as it comes out. Yeah, just stop the whole time. Yeah. Pretty yeah. Graphic. I mean, you gotta kind of like take a look to whether or not it's CGI, because a lot of the stuff like that will be CGI as well now. Okay. Um, but it's definitely possible. Yeah, so like, like, it's it's more economically feasible to do with CGI than it is. It's more. Just realistic. Or? I wouldn't say. I mean, you can be realistic. Um, there's also people out there that like CGI where it's not as realistic as I'm sure you guys have seen in movies. There you go, right? Um, it's more so to prevent the time it takes to apply something like that on set. Because movies, they typically, they want to move as fast as possible, right? They want to get people ready as fast as possible, get them out there, make their shot, go on to the next one. So when they decide to do CGI, it's because they can just do that at the end. Whereas for us to apply something like that could take one, two hours, three hours, depending on how intense the actual look is. Um, so it's definitely not more affordable yeah. to do CGI, but that would be one of the reasons why. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, like climate, I know it has, probably has a lot to do with uh, how long it, uh, the climate should last. So being in Canada, you know, nine times that time it's snowing around mm -hmm. Halloween time. Whereas, like, if you were down in Atlanta where they were shooting, like, The Walking Dead, it might be a different... Now, do you have to apply, like, with different appliances due to different climates? Or? There definitely would be cases for that. Um, in Calgary, it's not as bad because we are dry here. And with the cold, makeup is not going to melt, it's not going to move as fast. So it'll actually stay put a lot longer. 
um, when you go to places that are out of town that are more tropical, um, you would definitely take precautions when applying it. You would probably want to secure it more than you would in a place like this and then seal it um, a bit more just to make sure it doesn't move. Those are one of those situations where we would probably be standing by constantly checking base on it. I did actually a movie in Belize and I was there the whole time just standing and every time he was ready I was like, okay, touch up. Because he was just melting at one point, right? And there's only so much you can do with blood and everything and sweating and that's another thing with appliances. The more you sweat, the looser the appliance is going to get. Yeah. Yes? What would you recommend for beginners that aren't necessarily great at this kind of stuff but would like to get into it? What are some good beginner products that are easy to use? I'm happy that you asked that. So the costume shop just got this in. Um, they also have a bunch of different products in there that you could possibly use. This is a great kit if you're just starting out because it gives you um, all these different products and different ways to put um, to create this type of look with creams and sealants and like a bunch of different types of makeup. So all of this stuff that they are using is new friendly. It is just something that you get better with with experience. Um, when you're going more like that's why I wanted to so show the third degree because it once you get the hang of it, it is really easy to use, especially for beginners, um, opposed to buying a full prosthetic and trying to cover edges and coloring, because it gets a little bit more detailed and a little more stressful when you're doing it that way. But this is definitely a kit that we, all of us just, we just found out about this too and we just love it. So um, something like this. And if you're going into places like Dawn's or the costume shop or Bleeding Art and you tell them, I'm a beginner, what should I use? They are more than happy to give you some suggestions. Um, I would definitely suggest starting out with creams before alcohols. Okay. You're going to get kind of used to using sponges and brushes with that and then be able to transition into the alcohols. Good to know, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Yes? What's that uh, clear ball that you were spraying this on one? the gentleman's hand? Yeah. Does he have that clear ball? Is, is it 99? Yeah, that's yeah, that's 99% of the ball. So it's activating the product. Okay. Yeah. And where could, do you get that? 99 alcohol? Yeah. You can get it at Shoppers. Oh, okay. Yeah. I just usually find 70s, so. Yeah, um, no, it is out there. And if you want, like, the actual alcohol that comes with the products, they will sell it at the shop that you're purchasing the products as well. Because I know that... Um, Sometimes it's behind the counter. Yeah, so you, you gotta ask, ask the pharmacist. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, the stuff that's on the shelf is usually the 70s. Okay, good to know. Is it Real Creations that has their own activator? Skin Illustrator. Uh, skin Illustrator, yeah. So if you buy any of the Skin Illustrator packs, they actually have their own activator, which is basically just mm -hmm. alcohol, but sold from their brown. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So the type of zombie that we're doing today is more of your infected type zombie. Um, Remo likes to refer to it as like your 28 days later zombie. Um, so you go in, veining is key. If you can tackle veining, it is going to make your look 10 times better. And a lot of what goes into veining, you can do different ways. You can do it with a sponge, dipping into product, and kind of like starting to move it around on the face in specific areas, right? Good thing to look forward to during like, as a beginner thing, is places where things can come out of. Your eyes, your nose, your mouth, your ears. Those are key points when you're doing zombies because that's where gross things come out of. Um, so that's kind of what we focus on as well. Uh, you can also use, if you're good with brushes, finding a very thin brush, dipping it into the cream, and kind of rolling it onto the skin for veining. Because veins aren't straight, so you don't want to make them straight. Um, look up pictures on Google, put them as references in front of you, and just practice on yourself. And I find if you roll it and you move it around and you spider it out, it has a bigger effect than if you're just trying to draw straight-handed. Does that make sense? Great. Um, Another good thing to focus on is obviously when you have passed, certain areas of your face start to sink in. So you get the dark circles around the eyes, you're going to get the contour from your ears to your cheekbones, underneath your chin. Those areas are great to focus on because it's just going to make your skin look sucked in. Because there's no nutrition anymore, right? So um, again, looking up photos on Google, <laughs> they're not always the, the nicest things to look at but it will definitely give you direction on where to apply those. Um, under the nose is a good place, the bridge as well. So you, when you're using colors like that, again, just as you would avoid white, avoid black. The skin doesn't really go that way unless you're dealing with frostbite or something. 
Um, so you would use kind of like a reddish brown deeper color, three to four degrees darker than your skin. What does the kit from the Dawn's Hobby Shop all include? Yeah, you can take a look at it. You guys can pass this around if you want. <coughs> sure, thank you. Yeah, it's all in hmm? Costume shop. What did I say? No. Oh, no, she said Dawn's. Oh, yeah, Costume Shop has that. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no problem. So can you guys all see how she's doing the veining here? She's just trickling it out on the actual veins that he already has. Great way to, to get into something like that. Use what you have, right? And you want to remember that it never really just stops. So when you're blending it, you want to make sure that you try to blend it outwards because veins will never just start and stop. And if you find that it's a little too harsh, you can also take a sponge, brush it out a little bit, and even use your stipple sponge with your creams and go back over it so it kind of has that underneath the skin tone as well. Um, for veining, you want to kind of stick with those deep purples, deep blues, because um, that's what is, right? It's not black. And if you use black, it's going to be a little too prominent. You're doing a great job, Scotty. Okay. Everybody say hi, Scotty. <laughs> hey, Scotty! Hey. Hey. <laughs> one, one on one resource that I was looking into was the, the Forensic Body Farm. Yep. Images from that. Yeah, if you can handle pump. looking at stuff like oh, that, really? it's great oh, yeah. to look at. Good to know. Yeah, because yeah. it's literally they take dead bodies and let them rot in various different ways. Yeah. Perfect. And if you can stomach it, it's a great reference. I'm a nurse. Yeah. I got it. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> See more some living. <laughs> Any more questions so far? Everybody keep going? Yes. Sorry, you mentioned activation. You put the, put the makeup on. Mm -hmm. What what is activation? Does that make it spray? So, so <laughs> oh, you spray it in the air and, and then it makes it soft. Then it makes it soft. Yeah. So I'm just gonna bring this around so you guys can all see it. It's like water paints. So it's hard, right? So once you spray it, it turns into a liquid and then it dries up again because the alcohol alcohol dries up. Barring the amount of use oh, well, just in your basement, um, they last a long time because a little <laughs> goes a long way with this stuff. Um, like I have, I have a palette that's probably maybe on its last life that I've had for about a year and a half. You need sad your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> no, no sad, sad. I, I've been on the same palette for three years, so. Uh -huh. It just yeah. depends on what I you use. I just wondered if, because of the fact that you're spraying yeah. with alcohol and the bacteria and stuff, no. if it would rot sitting in Oh, no, it's alcohol. It would kill the bacteria. Uh, <laughs> Are you putting the same makeup on the nails that you were putting on the skin? Absolutely. And you can also, so they make it uh, for hair as well, which is really handy for film. Uh, if you need to gray out somebody's eyebrows or age them or something like that, it has a nice iridescence. Um, they also make these in a, a tooth palette, so you can really create texture and, and make a dynamic kind of tooth to match your character versus using a uh, enamel that's a little bit flat. So I'll use these guys right here after sanitizing and cleaning them. Just dry out the teeth and paint them on. It stays really well. Just make sure that you have a toothbrush and some uh, mouthwash with alcohol in it. Hmm. When did you guys start this one? The demo? Yeah. Uh, one o'clock. Okay. Yeah. Um, they did, yeah, well. we put the third degree on him first because we wanted the drying time. That's right. Yeah. So a good thing to remember again with zombies or any, any other type of makeup, when you start on the face to make sure to bring it down the neck. A lot of the times people will focus solely on here and not have so much going on here, and it really does take away from the look. Um, that's why I'm getting Kyra to, to do the hands and the arms too, so you can get kind of a full effect. Yes? With the veining, does it come up the neck too? It definitely can, yeah. 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 Especially on those big ones that you yeah. have, right? Okay. It's great. Coming out the ears and coming down the neck, it looks great. How do you remove this? Just soak them water? Yeah, warm, warm water and soap. Yeah. A good um, shower. A good, Many, a good many showers. Shower. 
Uh, you don't want to use, because it is an alcohol-based product on some of this stuff, you don't want to start spraying alcohol on your skin. You're going to dry yourself out. You might eventually start feeling sick. So if you do have a really warm, hot shower with soapy water, it will just come off. Good scrub brush. Yeah. So that goes off the hair. Mm -hmm. yeah. The silicone just peels off. Okay. Yeah. That's the best part about it is you don't have to use a remover for it. It gets tricky when you're starting to try to use adhesives and removers and setting sprays. One nice thing I found with, with, the, with the silicone ap application was I was able to reuse it later with the You blues. definitely can, yeah, Cause so because it peels off just as, like as it is. So if you want to reuse it, you can actually glue it back down, I would suggest with Prozade. Yes. Yeah. Oh, no, no, sorry, Talesis. It has to be silicone adhesive. Yeah, Talesis is a bit more expensive. If you want to try to use Prozade, you can. Um, and then once it's down, you can actually take more third degree and just keep building on top of it. Oh, I never thought of that. Yeah, so it just, because it silicone sticks to silicone, latex sticks to latex, you can't stick them to each other. So okay. you can actually Good just, yeah, you can actually just build up onto that silicone over and over again. Yeah. You could also over exaggerate the veins and swallow them. Yes, you can. More. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> Still needs a solder mouth. <laughs> Give him time. <laughs> he needs to look sicker, a little baby oil on the hair. Give <laughs> him um, that greasy look. <laughs> yes. Oh, uh, Ryan. Um, so another fun thing to, to focus on when you're trying to zombify. Aging is a good thing to, to look at. Um, where you have wrinkles in your skin would be a great place to over exaggerate for zombies. So around your eyes, all of those lines on the forehead, because um, again, your skin is supposed to be sinking in and rotting. So if you look at old age or where you have natural lines and just exaggerate on that, it will help your look, um, just look a little more realistic. Any more questions? Before I touch base as they move along a little bit more. Once they add the blood and stuff, I'll get them. Yes? Well, one more. Uh, with the palms. Yeah. It's like uh, constantly moving your palms. Mm -hmm. Is there anything special that you can apply for the palms? Because they can get sweaty too, right? So you can use. Um, theatrical dirt. Mm -hmm. I like theatrical gloves. dirt. Yeah. <laughs> or oh, oh, theatrical dirt? Yes. Oh, yes. No, no, I was thinking um, for prep. For prepping the palms? Yeah. Just a base of um, alcohol paint. Yeah. Um, because there's not so much that you can actually put on there to like prep for it, but the alcohol products do hold. And if you get, um, especially like dirt, dirt products, um, they're great for getting into the skin and rubbing them in there. Deodorant. Yeah, deodorant. <laughs> All the fun weird things you can use at home. <laughs> uh, for dirt, actually, a fun a fun thing for you to do, especially if you're just starting out. Something that we like doing if we have like a whole bunch of background people that we need to do, we will actually take sanitizer, add um, makeup dirt, don't go outside, don't pull it off your ground, don't do that, um, and add it about 50-50 into the sanitizer, shake it up and pump it out and just start to rub it on the skin. It'll start to like really get into your skin and because it's alcohol based, it'll dry up and it won't move. It's super easy thing to do, cheap, and it's very effective. What's the difference between just regular dirt and the makeup dirt? Other than Health and cleanliness. safety? <laughs> <laughs> I was totally wondering if there, if there was actually a difference other than just the... Yeah, yeah I mean, it's dirt. made to last, right? The professional grade stuff is made to last. Okay. Dirt outside is going to wash off. And, you know, yes, like we would never put something like that on a person. Because you don't know what's in that dirt. You don't know what, people's allergies. So it's, I would definitely suggest, unless for some reason you want to like go outside in the mud and muck up your clothing. I, I'm just wondering if it was like specifically made of something else, like it's made like to last. Fine coffee grinds or no, it's it's um it's not coffee, but um it is specifically made for what you're going to be doing, and you can buy dirt for skin, clothes, all different types. Okay. You can buy it wet. You can buy it dry. Be careful with it, uh, just make sure you're not breathing it in because it is a silica base and over time you can get silicosis if you are exposed to it over and over and breathing it in. So. Not, not a good way to die. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? 
So as I'm waiting for them to progress, if anyone wants to actually just come up and take a look, you're more than welcome to take a look at what they're doing right now. Can we come up and do better pictures? Yeah, of course. Yeah. My body be taller. <laughs> <laughs> and take a look at where the silicone is. If you have questions for Kyra or anything, feel free to ask. You're doing excellent, Kyra. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Thank you. You're going to ask him to do soon. <laughs> He's too happy. <laughs> He'll look less happy when he has blood all over him. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> That'll be the fun part. Yeah, third, third, third degree was definitely a game changer for me. Come take a look, guys. Look at the veins. Don't be afraid. We're all friends here. I won't bite yet. <laughs> yes, thank you. There's progress. Kyra, know me from... Screen fest here as the zombie there. Yes. She's like, oh, I know that tall guy. He's the blown out chest zombie. <laughs> Boom. Don't you usually have a chainsaw at Screen Fest? No, actually. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm the zombie that has the blown out chest. Oh, yes. I got two pictures of you on my fridge from Screen see? Fest. See? See? <laughs> I know we've met there many times. <laughs> I'm this guy. Oh, good. <laughs> I've been doing this since day one. See? <laughs> you know what I say? It's legend. Wait for it. Dairy. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. I'm going out for lunch now. <laughs> so one thing I will talk about, we are not actually doing it today, but to add to your look, have you guys heard of tooth enamel? Yes. Yes. No. Okay. So if you get that rotted out, um, tooth enamel, they come in a tons of different colors. Um, how you would do that is you would just wipe off the teeth, make sure you wipe it off because you don't want any saliva on there. It comes with its own little brush, you paint it on, and it looks like your teeth have rotted or stained or dirt. They use it for like people who have been smoking a lot or to black out a tooth and make sure it look like it's not there. You can actually get a rotted color um, and a dirty color and it just adds to that effect, right? You got to think about all of these little things just to Zombie white teeth, right? So you just want to make sure that you kind of attack all areas. How do you get the time Brush teeth. Yeah, please brush teeth. Yeah. You might have like a little bit stuck on the inside for, a, you know, just floss. It can take a couple of these. Put it on there. Yeah. Please do. Yes. What do you recommend for both prosthetics, specifically ones that attach to your teeth? What kind of Prosthetics that attach to your teeth? Yeah, like just say a vampire bang or something. Or uh, oh, okay. Oh, yeah, you're talking about. Okay. Yeah. Um, most of the time, those ones that you buy will come with a putty. Mm -hmm. That putty is what you're supposed to use with it. If you are trying to step it up right. a notch, I would suggest just getting them professionally made because what they'll do is actually cast your teeth, sculpt them, and then they just click in and click out. Right. Yeah. But the ones that you would buy in like a shop, they would definitely come with their own type of putty, kind of like denture putty, right? That would be your best bet for stuff like that is any type of denture putty. Because yeah. you can't really glue anything to your teeth, right? You don't want to anyway. That's not a good thing. There is people who do it. What blood are you guys using? Uh, is it your bleeding art? Bleeding art. Yeah, so this is one of our favorites. Bleeding Art Industries makes their own. They are local. So it's great to support local. Um, comes in regular, flesh, a few different types, uh, depending on the look that you're looking for. And they come in different sizes. There's this guy, there's the big two liter bottles, and but we definitely like this stuff. Is, is there a food Does safe? it dry looking? Like, does it keep that wet, shiny it's, look? Or it does will it have the wet, shiny look, yeah. Okay. But you also can buy <coughs> specific blood that will dry up, in case that's what you want. They also do sell um, blood jam, which I will take a little bit and let you guys touch if you want later, but this stuff will kind of have the illusion that it's wet, but it'll it'll dry up. Okay. This is great, like once they get to that point for like spots that you want to add this into for where dry blood would be. But. Is that to mix as well? No, you would just buy it like this. Yeah. And they have a smaller version as well.
that one does stain your skin just a little bit. So you really gotta wash that one out because it's very highly pigmented. So when I was talking about a stipple sponge, that's what Rima is using right now. Can you hold that up? <coughs> just a black coarse sponge. So you don't actually have to use the soft ones and rip off the pieces. Stipple sponges are great. You can get them um, a little softer and harder, just depending on what you need them for. And you can use them with creams, you can use them with water base, you can use them with alcohol. They're very versatile. Any more questions like that? Where do you get the contacts? Uh, you bought yours at the costume, costume shop. Yeah. Yeah. He, he came with those on. He's a trooper. <laughs> He was very excited. He's like, should I come full costume? I'm like, yes, you should. <laughs> so she's actually using that blood jam with this double sponge. So you can see that she's adding it to areas where he would have bled from. One thing to prevent is you don't want to just attack the entire area right here, or you're just going to kind of slip into that vampire type look. And it's depending on how thick you put it, it's going to start to look like a beard. So be sparse. Take away what you need to take away. Use the stipple sponge so it's not just one flat color. And don't be afraid to get it up in those nostrils. It'll just wipe out. Uh, with, with the blood jam, mm -hmm. if, if it kind of dries out, because I, I have some at home, but I didn't use it for a long time, and it didn't seal properly, and mm -hmm. it got kind of dry and crusty, can, I, can that be re-softened? I, if I have one that I need to reuse, I have sprayed water into it, mix it back up, make sure you seal it again. Okay. It'll give you a bit more of a lifeline. Okay. But once it gets to the point where too much air is in, there's not really too much to do to save it. Hmm. Yeah. But try with the water first. Spray okay. some water. Don't throw a bunch in there, but bit by bit, yeah, it was move more, it around. It was most of a, a container, so yeah. I didn't want to chuck it out. No, of course, yeah. Not, not cheap stuff. <laughs> Getting there. Yes. Sort of a side question is the uh, the makeup artist union separate from that trip? Yes. Or, okay, so the IOTI two one two film union is for kind of your behind the scenes people. So it's your carpenters, your props, oh, set deck, um, hair, makeup, lighting. Yeah. It's, we're, we're we're the crew members. We're the people you don't see. Um, for mouth blood, we don't have any with us today, but for mouth blood, please make sure that you're actually buying blood that's specific for your mouth. You don't want to be putting the blood that they're using on his skin inside because it is, there is preservatives in it. So you're going to get soap, you're going to have, I mean, it's not going to hurt you, but you don't want to be... You, that, that's why I was asking about whether it was food safe. <laughs> Some of it can be. You just have to check the label and ask the person selling it because it's become more popular to have organic type. Yeah. where it is safe. I know that there is some films where we've shot in Calgary and they've actually just got um, a prosthetic artist to create like jugs and jugs oh, full yeah, of like it's edible It's easy, blood. super easy to make. Yeah, it is. <laughs> um, and then to do it for like movie quality and stuff too. Yeah. So there is tons of different brands that sell mouth blood. So just make sure that if you're, that's what you're using it for, that you check to make sure that you're buying the, the right one. When you're doing it, please decant it into a little cup and then use it. Don't start swinging it out of the bottle because then you start to contaminate it and then you're spreading with your friends and nobody likes that. <laughs> okay, I think we're almost getting to the end here. So any more questions while we're still picking around? Great. Or some blood on them. Just watch the carpet. <laughs> That's what you're like. I'll, I'll follow you with this. <laughs> we will be doing uh, makeup Which for people at the booth is. all weekend That's long. So if anybody wants to get made up, doesn't matter what the look is, cool. we can make it happen. Uh, if you want to buy some prosthetics from the costume shop oh, next to us, we will apply them for you. Yes. Are you self taught Did you go to school? Uh, yeah, we all went to school. Um, I was trained in Toronto in 2007. Wow. Yes, I'm originally from Ontario and I moved out here in 2008. Wow. Yeah. But
But there is a couple schools in town. There's some great ones. If, if that's something you're looking for, like looking for, there's some great mm -hmm. ones in Vancouver as well. Um, they all are. They're all around. Again, if you want to talk to Kyra, she's got tons of information on stuff like that. We will be at the booth all day today, all day tomorrow. Um, feel free to stop by. I love answering questions, so don't be afraid. Until you guys are done, done. Just blood, blood. Okay. So in a couple minutes, they'll be completely done. I will actually walk around with this. Do you still need the jam? No. I'll walk around with the jam so you guys can take a look at it. Oh, Well, Ashley's talking about that. I just want to say, um, it's, when I get to work with these guys, it's really special to me. It's um, not often that you get to find an artist that you really connect with that has your back 100%, and that's kind of what we have here with Rima, Ashley, and myself. Um, Ashley's very, very humble, but I'm just gonna say it, that um, she actually uh, won the Alberta Media Award for Best Makeup in Alberta this past year at the MPS, the Rosies. Um, I was lucky enough to have Ashley bring me on set to assist her on that film. It's alive. It, uh, <clears throat> it has Angus McFad McFadden in it. He, uh, he's from Saw 3. Since we're at HorrorCon, I feel like that's probably the place to, to mention it. But um, that was a, it's a challenging thing to work on a low bit budget film, but the gore on it is just unreal. And Ashley really did an awesome, awesome job. So I just need to give her a shout out for that because she is not only is she talented, and knows how to drive her business. She's, uh, she's like a great friend, so yeah, yeah. make sure you support local there. Sound like a, a silly question, but it, it probably isn't. Uh, for film, mm -hmm. say in film, how do you know when you're done? Your time runs out. Uh, <laughs> you just keep working until they say no. We um, got to get you out there. The one, the one thing that, like, I will definitely stress about myself and the girls here, we will continue to keep going because we were going to strive for perfection. So there does come a point where there is too much. So we do have our time frames production would give us, okay, you have an hour to do this. So we would get done what we needed to get done. If we go on set and we notice something there, they do, do give us a second to go back in and fix anything that we need to fix. But it is also based basically on time frame. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. We don't <laughs> okay, as soon as these girls are done, you guys can come up, take pictures. If you want them to stand up, you can stand up. Um, take a look, ask some more questions if you want, and then we'll be done. Sorry about that. This is, if this back is all white and fresh, I'll make me a little bit nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to thank you all for coming out. I'll be doing this again, same demo tomorrow, so if you end up having more questions, just come on back and ask. Um, other than that, yeah, we're, we're grateful you all came. It was a good turnout, so thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.